Hey, Newscast listeners, just want to give you a little information about the mission of the Newscast. Our mission stems from the mission of the Red Smith Banquet, and that mission was to support youth sports in the Fox Valley. Over the 57 years of its existence, we've been honored to give out over a million dollars to various youth sports organizations throughout the Fox Valley. The NoosaCast is looking to continue that mission and support youth sports as well. You can help us do that by donating to the NoosaCast and the Red Smith Sports Banquet. On today's NoosaCast, Tash and I dive into the YMCA with Tom Went. Fascinating conversation. Tash and I take an old look at new, presented by Raleigh Winter and Associates. Our Red Smith Banquet Throwback brings us to the one, the only, Max McGee, hero of Super Bowl One, longtime radio announcer. 1985. We brought you Tommy Lasorda last week from the same show in 85. Max McGee, just fantastic. Tash and I end the show like we always do with It's Forgotten, and I'm never forgetting. So what do you say, folks? Let's get this show on the road. Sometimes our, our hardest part is we don't know how to say no. And sometimes we have to remember we can't do it all. We can't be everything to everybody. But I'll tell you, the only way we learn that usually is by saying yes a, a lot of times. And very rarely do you regret saying yes. Welcome to the NoosaCast. What is a NoosaCast? It's where we bring local folk stories to life through conversation. All right, NoosaCast listeners, welcome to another fabulous episode of the NoosaCast. Uh, we're going to get back into interviews this week, uh, not just interviews from the 80s, but actual interviews from the present. So, um, well, yeah, let's go back, let's go back to the way we were doing it before. But uh, that was fun last week. Uh, if you haven't listened to the Tommy Lasorda, uh, you, you're going to want to because the quotes in there are unbelievable. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we could, uh, you know, looking at this, we record this on a Sunday. It's Sunday night, the uh, Dodgers and Mets play. And we could see a classic Yankees Dodgers World Series again this year. Low key, Tosh. I'm, that's what I'm pulling for. <laughs> I, I know Subway Series would be cool, but Dodgers Yankees, that's old school. I mean, heck, that, that's what it was when we were kids. When we when we first fell in love with baseball, it was yeah. Dodgers Yankees, Garvey, you know, Guerrero, Sachs, Fernando Valenzuela going up against you know, the, the Yankees with, um, oh, let me see if I can pull some of those names. Mattingly, yep. right? Mattingly, Mattingly would have been was there. there. Um, Absolutely. Nettles, maybe. Yeah, you had. Winfield. Well, Winfield, Winfield possibly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a classic matchup. It's a the two well, biggest markets. Gosh, we're forgetting a major one. Reggie, Reggie Jackson, Jackson. Years back in the yeah. tees. Remember that? that? Reggie Jackson gets Mr. The, October. The Dodgers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, it's, it's a classic baseball matchup. It's the two biggest two of the biggest markets, if not the two biggest markets in, in baseball. Um, and you might be able to see, you know, two of the best power hitters to play the game and Aaron judge and Shohei Otani. Um, and you know, anytime you get to see, I, I, I'm not nothing against Aaron judge and Soto. Uh, anytime right now that you get to see Shohei Otani, you should check him out. Tosh, I have not watched a lot of baseball, but I had the other night I went to my buddy Keith. He's a he's a letter carrier. And we we watched when the Yankees clinched that the the ALCS. Yeah. Soto's bomb, <laughs> that at bat, that stare down yeah. was just incredible. What an incredible moment. I, baseball is so weird, right? If you play 162 games, it's just kind of boring. Everybody is just blah about it. And then you get to the playoffs and it's just electric. It is every single pitch. It's it's weird how that works. I think hockey is maybe similar yeah. to that, but it's really strange how that works. The stadiums become electric and in me and not following baseball, Tasha, it took me a couple of Indians to realize that the guardians were the former Indians. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't click right well, away, but what the hell? It's still the Indians to me. Uh, yeah, me but, too. Uh, you know, you're right. Baseball playoffs are pretty magical, um, just like hockey playoffs. There's just, just, you know, I think, I think what it comes down to is you play 100 and what 82 games in baseball. 
Um, and yeah, in hockey, like you're playing, gosh, you know, 80 games. I mean, you, they're long, long seasons. I know the NFL right. is a long season, but it's one game a week. When you talk about yeah. baseball and hockey, you're playing multiple games a week. Um, and it's, it gets to the playoffs and it, they step it up to another level. They really, truly do. Yeah. Oh, they really do. I'll, I'll never, it should be my, it's never forgotten segment of Soto's home run, that hole at bat. That guy is just amazing. Yes. The stare down, the, 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 I don't even know what you call it, the pacing or the prancing that he does, <laughs> staring back at the pitcher and the movements. It, it's incredible. And then just to, it's, what a, bomb. it seems we've been talking Man. about him for a long time and seeing him in baseball. He's only 25, which is yeah. absolutely crazy. So, yeah, he's, he's an electric player. You're going to, you, you are literally seeing, uh, you know, if it goes Dodgers and uh, and Yankees, you're going to see some of the top players in baseball playing, and it's definitely well worth it. Nothing against the Mets. Um, I would like to see that Met that uh, Brewers curse be broken here. Yeah, and somebody yeah. the Brewers lose to <laughs> doesn't go to the World Series, and maybe the Brewers can get on board and start going to the World Series themselves next year. But um, yeah, I I kind of am pushing for the Dodgers. You, you know. Even though it's those two big markets and a lot of money spent on those two teams, uh, which is absolutely crazy amounts of money, um, it still would be fun to watch. It would, and I got to be honest with you, in the moment watching those games unfold, I, I honestly don't think about the money. I really don't even care less. It's just good electric baseball, and that, that, that was kind of fun. Yeah, and speaking of electric, since we do record this on a Sunday, how about that yes. whiteout game? Yeah, how about that? Huh? Packers found a kicker, yeah. and what a game. Seven lead changes, just incredible. Absolutely. Gosh, I love Sundays. Sundays have become so much fun where you just do a lot. I do way too much eating on Sundays, <laughs> but a lot of football watching. You morph into the couch. I had a frozen pizza party for the Packer game one a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> you know, and then, then you and I just after that kind of get together and, and record a podcast. It's turned into my favorite day of the yeah. week. Yeah, and this week was an electric game. I mean, you have a kicker who's uh, obviously uh, cemented himself in Packer lore now, being picked up earlier in the week and kicking a game-winning field goal right away. That's pretty awesome. All right. Oh, incredible, incredible. Game-winning drive for love and – Ah, just just a fantastic yeah. game, and and you couldn't ask for better weather. I think they said I don't know, it was the first time in a long time that the game time temperature was above seventy yeah. degrees. I mean, come absolutely on. incredible. And the N NFC North is looking like a uh, stacked division Power right house. now, where all four teams could make the playoffs if things continue the way they do. Yeah, boy. I mean, and that that Viking Lions game was a heck of a absolutely. game. That, that went on at the same time as the Packer game, but. Yeah, it's going to be a battle right down right down to the end. It's kind of cool to see how all, all the NFC North teams it is. light it up. So all these young quarterbacks are you know starting to to come into yep. their own. The, the, these coaches, I, I love the coaches. I mean, I loved the, I loved the NFC or the you know the Central back in the day when you had Ditka, you had Forrest Gregg, right. you, you had some characters, right? Wayne Fonts yep. and, and Bud Grant and and all these guys. Dave Wanstead. There were a lot of characters throughout the years. Buddy Ryan. <laughs> And oh, I love it. Dan Campbell now and in and uh in, De in Detroit is love yeah, that guy. It's, it's fun to watch and uh <clears throat> anytime they play each other there there's a battle now. Uh so it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season unfolds. Um we also had some great Badger win against Northwestern. Yeah. And the strength and conditioning coach jumped into Lake Michigan for the boys. <laughs> now if you saw that yeah. on YouTube or saw that on social media. He promised that he'd jump in Lake Michigan if the Badgers beat Northwestern, and he fulfilled his promise because Northwestern is playing in that tiny little stadium right on the lake. Yeah, that's uh, right. Think, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I think right. their next two game home games are at Wrigley Field, though. So, oh, yeah. are they really? That'll be yeah. cool. So their stadium's obviously being uh, renovated through next year yet. This one's supposed to open in twenty six. So, um, yeah. So the Badgers are are you know they've hit a different level now. They're starting to look like a decent team. And uh, so we have some hope for them as well. And uh, then, you know, I guess we had to go right to it. Uh, we start playoffs this week. We have soccer yeah. regional starting on Tuesday. Um, I know I'm, I'm working the uh, Oshkosh North regional. They're hosting a game, I believe against Germantown. I could be wrong on that, but I know it's from a team down South. It's a good, you know, they're good programs down there. So um, 
a soccer regional start, volleyball uh, regional start this week as well. Um, and we have football as well. Football starts Friday nights. No, absolutely. Some great games. I, I, I went to a game, Tosh, this last Friday with our friend. Uh, we had him on the Noosa cast, the Kimberly lacrosse yep. coach, Roger Hornberger, went to uh, the Kimberly North game. What, what a game that was. Yeah. Uh, North went for two in the last play of the game and, and didn't quite get it in. Uh, lost 10 to nine, but those two teams turn around, Tosh, right away in level one and, and, and battle it right. out in, in, uh, in the playoffs. Yeah. That, that's the way yeah, it we'll works. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, but, no, exactly. Um, no, that's, that'll be a good matchup. Um, it looks like, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Um, well, I talk about FVL is going to Wausau. Wausau West, I believe. Wausau East. One of the Wausau teams. And uh, sure. they're traveling there Friday. Uh, that's a number five and four, four and five, five and six matchup. So that should be a good game. Um, I think FVL has a chance there. We'll, ha- you know, we'll have to see. Uh, Oshkosh North travels to West De Pere, uh, you know, their first playoff game in a long time. So um, good luck to Oshkosh North as well. Um, you know, Kakana, Xavier's play and made it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teams in the Fox Valley alone that made playoffs. Yeah. So um, it's Winnicott. Winnicott I thought yeah. I heard was a Winnicott one. Winnicott and yeah. uh, Seymour is in. And, you know, there's it, it's a long playoff because it's one game a week. <laughs> Uh, four yeah. weeks of playoffs, but uh, we'll obviously be talking as we move through that and talking about the other sports as well. But yeah, a lot of excitement uh, this time of year for for playoffs for this fall season. Oh, absolutely. It's the best time of year. It really is yeah. truly the best time of year. And when the, when the weather is nice, it really becomes the best time of year. But every football game is exciting as they, as they move through the levels on the working their way down to to Madison mm-hmm. and, and it's the same thing. I remember, I remember when, when Cooper, my oldest boy was playing yeah. soccer, the excitement of working through the levels, uh, but they're, they're all, all the sports are like that. It's exciting. It's, it's, it's what you play for Absolutely. right now. So we, we work our way and work our way to Thanksgiving. Tash. Yeah. Well, before we get to Thanksgiving, Joe, I know you, uh, you know, you have some, some stuff this week. You're going to the kitchen dwellers at Poplar Hall. Yeah. If any, he I'm might excited. be by himself. So if you see a guy with the dreads dancing by himself, huh. besides the lead singer, yeah. uh, go up and give him a hand and dance with him and uh, make sure yeah. he's behaving himself. I need a friend. <laughs> please, please be my friend. I, I truly might be solo. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's a Sunday night. It's early, but uh, well, this will be too late to come out. But Tosh, maybe I've made a friend. We, we, we can only All right. Hope. But yeah, I'm excited. I've listened to them a, a ton and, and I'm excited. It just, I, I've said this a hundred times, it blows me away that Poplar Hall gets these kind of, these kind of groups yeah. coming through Appleton. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And if you haven't listened to that band, they're fabulous. Their live, uh, live albums that they have out are absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, and they do a great job and it's going to be a good show. I um, also have to mention that this coming Saturday, the, I believe that will be the 26th. Um, Lawrence has a lacrosse scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, I yes. believe the first yes. game's at 10 o'clock. Uh, Lawrence plays Minnesota, uh, Minnesota's club team. I believe, I, I believe that's what they are. Um, but that should be Correct. awesome. Uh, if you get a chance and you want to see some good lacrosse, it's going to be beautiful weather. I think it's in the sixties, uh, perfect fall weather. Check out the Bontable and, uh, check out that, that lacrosse day at the Bontable. Yeah, that's going to be cool. I mean, you and I are excited to have college lacrosse just literally down the street. So, I mean, the Bonta Bowl, there is no better stadium anywhere mm-hmm. around. I mean, Lambeau Field almost included. It, it's just, it's a beautiful yeah. setting down there. And and um, they're going to be playing lacrosse on that field. So that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to get there. Uh, I think Ethan and I will head over there and watch a little, at least the Minnesota Lawrence game for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, that'll be good. I fortunately going to have to be delivering mail that day, but uh, I, in spirit, maybe I'll you be could there, do it Tash. by drone and just sit there and. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> That's uh, that might not be too far off in the future. The the technology and drones is yeah, that's pretty crazy. You ever go down that rabbit hole I, on on you like drone footage? The way some of these pilots can fly through buildings oh, yeah. and cars. Yeah, it's it nuts. is pretty incredible. Cool. Um, I know there's some pretty talented people using those, and it's uh some of that footage they get is absolutely amazing. It really is. So anything else, Joe, going on that you uh, want to talk about? 
No, Tash, I'm literally just buried in political mail. It's been <laughs> nuts at the post office. I know everybody that listens to this, I'm sure, receives ungodly amounts of political mail. I am just the messenger, and good God, do we get a lot of it. So I feel for you. I, too, come home and empty my mailbox full of useless junk. But uh, I save it to uh, hey. put in the fireplace. <laughs> That's right. And, and hey, the, the post office needs to make money somehow, That's some true. way. So we will deliver you political there flyers. You go. Excellent. <laughs> but, yeah, other than that, Tosh, that, that's literally my life. How about anything uh, anything exciting for you? Actually, I know a congratulations is in, in store for this week. You, you had a, a special number hit this week, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, Melissa and I hit uh, the 21st anniversary. So, yeah, yeah. That was, that's exciting. It's always fun. Uh, it's been a great 21 years and hopefully another 21 more at least to uh, continue. So yeah, it was, uh, we had a good weekend and uh, it was a beautiful weekend. This actually reminds me a lot of 21 years ago, our wedding. It was, uh, you know, it was in the seventies. Um, yeah, yeah, it was incredible. So this, this weather this weekend reminds me a lot of 21 years ago. So. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. You guys easily have 21 years in you, my God. That's <laughs> absolutely that that's for sure and many more after Absolutely. that so, so yeah congrats well, thank you. to you guys that's appreciate awesome that. yes yeah other than that we're uh you know just ethan's getting ready for playoff football and uh hopefully they have a good week of practice and um you know just uh get into those those friday games so it'll be fun yeah great time of year like we said great time of year and i'll tell you what else is great tash it's when we take an old look at new yeah let's move on to that It's that time again, once again, for an old look at new. Brought to you by Raleigh Winter and Associates, celebrating 55 years. Did you know that in 1962, an Appleton junior high school teacher with a strong work ethic started a residential realty company? His name, Raleigh Winter. Three generations later, the Winters still hold true to a strong work ethic and an excellent reputation in the community. Today, Raleigh Winter & Associates remain actively involved in providing retail, office, and industrial users an affordable, well-designed working environment through the creation and or acquisition of quality real estate in the Fox Cities and even beyond new. So what do you say? Let's take an old look at new. All right, NoosaCast, we are ready for that little look at history that we like to call an old look at new. Um, Joel, I'm going to kick it off to you. What do you have? What are you looking at this week? Well, Tosh, in, in, in my scrolling, like I usually do, I came across something and, and the building is still there and I have the greatest memories of it ever, but it, it's, it's Mark's big boy. <laughs> there were two of them actually in yeah. the area. One was uh, Galvin's on, on Oneida and Ballard, basically that corner yep. right, right by the bowling alley. There was another one out on West, um, West college Avenue. I bought where the Texas roadhouse yeah. is some, somewhere in that, that neighborhood. But if you know it, you know, it had an, an iconic look. It was, I don't even know how to describe it. It was the first place I ever had chicken parm of all places. <laughs> But Mark's or uh, yeah, Mark's big boy. Obviously, yeah, there's a, still a few around. I mean, they, they had the guy that held the hamburger right. up, but yeah, they, they had the best hamburgers. And and I remember going there with with my dad. And and a Friday night ritual was to go to a high school basketball game, and we'd we'd stop for dinner at at uh, at, at the big boy, <laughs> Mark's big boy. And God dang, that was good, Tosh. And yeah, they're really not around anymore. But yeah, they were good. That's awesome. Yeah, I, yeah, those were the the iconic big boy who is standing in front of the restaurants. Yeah. 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 yeah if you, if you get hand, hands on one of those. Now they're probably worth a lot of money. Oh, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. It's probably sitting in somebody's garage. Exactly. Right somebody's now. barn somewhere. The pickers probably found That's it right. already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Well, Tosh, now that I'm starving, I'm going to look forward to, uh, to your rendition of an old look. All at right. You. I'm going to go back to October 23rd. Uh, 1921, <clears throat> and on that date, the Green Bay Packers played their first NFL game. They defeated the Minneapolis nice. Mariners, uh, Marines, I'm sorry, the Minneapolis Marines, 7-6 uh, nice. before a crowd of 6,000 people. <laughs> wow, very yeah. nice. That's a pretty good crowd. That's a pretty good crowd. 1921. Yeah, I think they only played like 
six games that year. I think they went like three, two, and one or something like that. I'm not sure. I can't remember the exact record. Uh, but I do know the date of October 23rd, 1921 was the first first game, and it was a win. So, Can you, I, There's no way they could have imagined, but but think, you know, 100 years later, <laughs> think of, you know, the game. From, from that game to right. 100 years later, it just yeah. – I couldn't even imagine. It's, it's nuts. Go from 6,000 fans to, what is it now, 80-some? 80s, 60s, yeah. I don't even know what they feel, but just just the way the game is played, the uniforms, the fields, Absolutely. the lights, the, I mean, just everything, the whole entire game. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, but it's awesome. Oh, it really is, and it's it's cool, actually, you know, to, we've talked about looking at the Packer history, but I mean, they pretty much invented the forward pass and, uh, you know, the crude offense that came through Green Bay. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Absolutely. And to think back that, you know, Green Bay Packers, 1921, that's pretty incredible. And Absolutely. Playing a team that I had never heard of before I saw that post of the Minneapolis um, <laughs> Marines. Absolutely crazy. A lot of weird uh, early, early history. Yeah. At, there's a lot of weird names, right? I mean, even like the Cardinals. Yeah. I think they, they were originally like the Chicago Cardinals yeah, or something like that, absolutely. right? So they're, they're like technically one of the oldest teams in the NFL, even though <laughs> you feel like they're an expansion that's team. That's true. So, yeah, that's good. You know, we always – uh like to mention too during this of who sponsors the old look at new well i think our, our sponsor would love it i know dub would, would love and remember mark's big boy so yes we, we proudly are sponsored by raleigh winter and associates <laughs> Well, the one thing that blew me away, I mean, 25 years you've been with the Y. So one, I can't even imagine all the changes you've seen, but that's incredible. 25 years. I mean, you have to just, what a joy. I bet you, you must love going to work. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, and when I, when I came to the Y, I didn't expect to have a career at the Y. I knew nothing about the Y when I came out of college and um, I was an intern in the sports department and from day one, just fell in love with the I th just the environment, um, mission-driven organization, um, which matched me in so many ways. And then, uh, yeah, sports was my thing. I was going to be in professional sports or I was looking down that path uh, coming out of UW lacrosse. And um, I started coaching, which I love to do. And I got to do that that first summer I was there. And maybe some of your kids, who knows, but <laughs> there's been thousands of them. And so, yeah. And so I, I fell in love with the community. I fell in love with the families, the kids. And and yeah, I just kept having the opportunity as the Y grew. So did my career. So um, it started in sports and then it's grown to much, much, much more now. Lacrosse is really quite a school, isn't it? When it comes to, to say sports management, just broadly, broadly said. I mean, we've had, I think Aaron Han Tash, if yeah. I'm oh, not yeah, correct, yeah, he, he went there, and 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 I know a lot of a lot of folks have have gone there, um, and have explored. Just it's amazing the different. Everybody says, well, I want to get in sports, professional sports, but the sports world is is huge, isn't it? I mean, it's it's the YMCA, it's the Fox Kiddies Convention Center, it's so many different things that that, that can be quote sports. Yeah, no, and that's that's exactly it. I, lacrosse, what I, why I went to lacrosse is I remember I was signed up, or I was already ready to go to Madison. I went to visit a lacrosse because some counselor said I got an extra credit to visit another school, right? And um, that's the most they probably provided that <laughs> in that time. But uh, I went, and it was a very active campus from the moment I walked step foot. And um, my, my degree was in rec management business. There was okay. sports management. Obviously, PE at the time was very, very um, and then athletic training, physical therapy. And yeah, you, you're some names like Matt, Matt Tenhaken and Aaron Hahn and um, yeah. the others from the area that are very active. Um, Mike Dreheim, I think. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. There are quite, quite a few. So. So where, where did you uh, grow up? I grew up in Racine. Okay. Yeah. Racine Horlick. I went to school at, and uh, yeah, great. <laughs> Uh, played played baseball down there mostly. Played basketball, a few other sports, but baseball is actually big. We were we were pretty good at the time in both baseball yeah. and basketball. Um, yeah, so yeah, big big school, very big high school, and <laughs> in a in a big city. So, so were you you were obviously thinking that yeah, I'm going to go into some type of sports. Even in high school, it was always kind of like a passion. 
Yeah, you know, I was the first uh, first kid in my in my family to go to college, so okay. I didn't know. You know, again, back to joking with counselors, I didn't know how this all ticked or worked, and you know, <laughs> what do you want to do when you grow up, right? right. <laughs> I think we still ask ourselves that. <laughs> um, but I remember, uh, I remember thinking, going, okay, what what do I like, right? If you have a passion for something, hopefully, you can turn it into a job, and I will. I remember my dad going, how do you make a job out of that? You can't, you know, very blue collar family. How do you make a job and raise a family? And I remember the question, I go, I don't know. And, uh, and so uh, fast forward 25 years, I can say at least I did that and, and still enjoy it. it. It is amazing. And it's, so you go to lacrosse, how, what is the path then to end up at the Y and in, in Appleton? Did you have any idea that was going to be your path? You, you, Not at all. Where are you in life as, you, as you're coming out of lacrosse? Oh. Not at all. So I, um, I did an internship um, after, um, right, we had to finish up my school and schooling and there was an internship at the final semester. And so they always encourage you to build your resume and, and community, um, I should say community rec, I worked for Park and Recs and lacrosse, I worked for the university recreation um, aspect, a, a lot of different areas, but I never, there was a YMCA internship. So I looked at it and it was a different part of the state. And I knew nothing about Appleton, and um, I was uh, blessed to be dating a girl at the time that was that knew a little bit about this side of the state. And she, she and I both did our internships on in Green Bay. She did, and, and I looked at this one at Appleton Y. And um, yeah, so I just said, hey, I'm going to go somewhere different, try something new. And I didn't think it was going to be a but a stepping stone, truly. And yeah. so, yeah. I, I was going to bring this up at the end of the interview, but it's almost become a theme early on you you kind of have a, a a way where you don't mind maybe taking chances teen you, you had i was reading an article somewhere where you said you get timely insights that come at at, at key moments in life and i feel like you kind of follow those and already you have a theme of, of you know going to college something that's never been done in your family taking a chance coming to the fox cities it's kind of the way you, you kind of live your life a little bit right yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Maybe I don't uh, I don't have the path set out for me. And I, I, uh, I, I follow, I think, uh, the signs around me. And hopefully, hopefully, and prayfully, that I get put in a, the right opportunity at the right time. And so, um, joking aside, I, I didn't have a dream job. I didn't have a I just kind of hoped that uh, things would work out and, 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 you know, obviously put a effort in the action as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Along you know, the way. And I, 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 I say that from from basically coming from the same spot. I kind of live my life the, the same way, so I, I understand and appreciate uh, where you're coming from. It's 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 pretty cool from from this end, and like, lucky to have you here in Appleton. Yeah. So you, you you ultimately get to Appleton, and one of the cool things that that Tash and I were talking about this be, before, just about the YMCA. We, we've we've had. You know, we, we've we've talked about Appleton and, and Lawrence a little bit, but it truly the beginning parts of Appleton were was Lawrence University, the YMCA, and just the city. I mean, those three literally grew up together uh, and and formed Appleton. And it's I don't know if that's unique to the YMCA, but I feel like that that's somewhat normal in in, in a lot of cities that the Y is literally a cornerstone of of cities. Yeah, I, 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 from so. There's a lot of why history that I could go on different tangents on. And um, early on, I was, you know, again, I was attracted to that uh, tradition and history of, of what it was and had no idea. Right. I had no idea. But then I will just tell you, you're right. It's traditionally that's what it was, because YMCA's have always kind of been a, a foundational place to go for whatever that community needed. And as many of you know, remember the old Y's, there was like apartments and yeah, dorms right. and such. Yeah. Um, Green Bay, I know, had them. The Appleton area had some because um, as people were, you know, coming and going, it was kind of a it was kind of a, a place to go that was they felt was safe and, um, you know, healthy. Right. And that's right. what why that's all the why started in America. Industrial Revolution. Everybody coming to this country. You know, they, they wanted to either they worked and either got in trouble and got bad habits or they worked and to try to raise their family and had a, you know, when their family's overseas, but they had a place to go that was safe and healthy. And, but they started as Bible studies, reading rooms, community, you know, hangout places more than anything, not the health and wellness sports thing that we have today, fortunately, right, but right. every community has the wise adapted to that community need. And, and um, yeah, so it's been very cool. And coming to this, why, um, when I walked in right away, the the names that you guys all talked to, um, you know, you 
talked about the McGinnis family or just recently ago when you had that, you know, yeah. just names like that in this community. Um, and at that, why as the history just, so listen to that, you know, it, I kind of felt a, a bigger sense of responsibility to continue it on somehow <laughs> to make that why successful, especially in the sports realm. So. I mean, those guys hold court every morning, don't they? In, in the sauna, in the locker room. The, I know Bill McGinnis still still leads that group. Uh, yeah, you, again, you might know even more. You probably know more names <laughs> in history than me. But oh yeah, I, I if I, I know what if I need to get something a decision made, I know where to go to ask for an opinion. I tell you that. <laughs> I'm careful what I ask so for. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Don't tell me. It's all about timing. So yes, it is. when you first get to Appleton, you do this internship. Um, what was your technical first job at the Y? So I was an intern and my first job is to just uh, to uh, do summer programming or summer camps, okay. coaching sports camps. And so that's what I did that first the whole summer is um, those we'd had sports camps. So every sport and <laughs> I was versed in every sport. I, I again, I coached kids be, even when I was playing in high school. Okay. And um, and so I, that's what I did there. And then we had some JV high school leagues that we had. I remember running those that first summer. So all these high school kids. And, wow. um, yeah, so that pretty much was it, but anywhere from little four-year-olds, like just rolling balls out and, you know, you know, probably watching them fall more than did anything else to <laughs> was some high school kids who were up and coming, you know, basketball players in area. I remember like the whole mix of between. So, and then, uh, you know, the staff that came with, we had a very, if you guys, some of you will remember this, we have a lot of high school and college kids now working for us, but we had grown adults who had a sports passion who a lot of people had second jobs. Right. Yeah. And that was their way to get a Y membership. And, right. and, but again, that's where that history transcended. I was the person kind of managing it, but these gentlemen and ladies, they're the ones who they were there before me. And, you know, I kind of just follow their lead. So. Does that happen much anymore? Or is that kind of a thing of the past? Some of the adults working at the Y. Yeah. It, you know, it's funny. It doesn't happen like it used to. It's almost now, closer to like retirement. Now we're getting a lot of those same faces and names, you know, coming back from retirement. Um, you know, a name that I know you guys know from the area from the Post Crescent is Dan Vanderpass. Yeah. Oh, sure. Who, remember, so Dan worked at RY part-time his whole career when he was there at the Post Crescent as a sports, you know, writer. And uh, and so he worked a second job for what, 30 years at the Y, every, three nights a week. So we had a lot of those type of people. Now it's like, you don't see them as much. They coach for the Y. They had kids in the program and they go, when, you know, when we have time, we're coming back. Well, now I've been there long enough. Some of those are following through on their promises and they're coming right. back to just, you know, whatever, help out where, however they can. But, um, but more, yeah, more at that level of life. Oh, that, that's cool to hear. And I mean, it's a special place to hang out. I, I can see where, where you would miss that if you're away from it for a time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a stage of life, right? Just the timing, the stage, and time, and energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as your career has grown through the Y, the Y itself has grown in the Fox Valley for sure. Um, I mean, you have so many different branches. I mean, you know, you have the Greenville, you have the new, the, uh, the new uh, old building, new one, over by Tri-County yeah, I mean, Ice Rink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll just share a little of my history from watching the Y grow. So when I came, it was just Appleton, Y, and Nina. Yeah. And I always equate it as that we talked to each other, but we didn't talk to each other. We knew who each other was, and they did things, and we did things, and um, respected it. But there wasn't a lot of collaboration. And and in that time, right around that time is when the Y merged together in 20, 2002 and really came together Um and so I started in 2000. So it was a lot going on. But I remember as a sports director, they were having me go to uh, Darboy, Darboy School, Sunrise School in Darboy to do a fo flag football league. Never done, had flag football at that time. Nobody had flag football. They had Pop Warner in fifth or sixth grade, but yeah. nothing. So I was going into the field with a bag of balls and running this flag football league. And then a few years later, there's the, the Heart of the Valley Y in Kimberly, right? And so mm -hmm. the Y is not somewhere where we go and we go and, and build buildings and hope it grows. It's the community says, yes, we want a YMCA here. And that's, okay. that's where we did programming in, in these areas. And then it led to community support. Then the Y building comes together, the facility, that's the last piece of the puzzle. And so, yeah, so that's one of the stories. And then same thing out in Greenville and Hortonville, we went out and I was doing programming out there for them way before there was even a Y facility. And, working we were doing a, a tackle football league out there in Hortonville and some basketball and 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 such and 
Yeah. So it just, it's funny how it all comes together, but it it's grassroots almost to build the community around it. And the why is just the name that ends up um, sustaining it, if you will. Right. So when early on in those stages, like how, how do you know, d- does the community come to you and say, we want flag football? I mean, that's a great example because the Saturday morning flag football program is, is tremendous. And it's, it's really, that's where the kids really get introduced to football and then they move on, you know, through the stages, but that's a great program. How, how does, as a sports director, I mean, how do you decide let, let's do flag football? Yeah. You know, whatever the, whatever it might be, it's, I get even still today and now in my role now today, I get everybody's ideas for everything and you have to vet <laughs> those out going, okay, yep. Is this right for the why? Is this, you know, going to be sustainable? Is, do we really, is it one person's passion or a lot? But it, at that time we were, um, we were looking for field space and Appleton didn't have field space, right. And, you know, downtown and, and um, somebody, I think from the Kimberly area said, you know, Hey, what if we did it over here? And those people from Appleton though, not necessarily Kimberly, but Appleton that said, Hey, would you do this? I think there's a school in, in Darboy that just was built. It was brand new. So, and, and I don't know how it came to that way, but um, yeah, so it's people coming together and then coming to us with the idea and, the best part about it all, no matter what I talk about today, is people look to the why because they think it's trusted. They know it's been here and it will always be here. And there's good mission and values. It's not going right. to be a flash in the pan, a self-seeking venture. It, it might not be, you know, just good as one person. You know, it, the why was great before myself and it'll be great after me. And I think that's what people always rallied around when they wanted to see something come to life. So. I, I've found just just personally, I've I've used it at different stages in my life. Sometimes it's been important, other times, maybe not. But you know, I feel like almost everybody learned to swim at the Y. I, you know, a lot of <laughs> especially parents are that that's the time when our kids are young. You you know, what sport is my kid going to play? Is, you know, or dance or whatever the the case is. The Y is a fantastic place to kind of get a taste of of all the sports, and then. But you use it at different stages in your life. I mean, then as an adult, you have great facilities for working out. You have, you know, spin studios for bicycling. You have all anything you want. And it, it's it, it's it, one. It's just it's unique in that that sense. But it's a playing ground for everybody. It is. And that's, you know, the, the last two words, our mission is for all. And, and right. So and, and sticking to just the, the activity aspect of it, of the for all part. That's exactly it. I mean, there's people. Parents trust their six weeks old, you know, that just starts daycare to a Y to, we always say six months to 106, right? There's something for everybody. And I will tell you, and I don't care if it's one of our board members who's very vested, if it's a longtime person that comes to our Y or somebody come outside the community, they come in our building and they don't realize what we all have to offer, right? Yeah. Um, and, and and we're very, very, our, our branch in Appleton is one of the largest branches in the state of Wisconsin. Okay. That's actually using all the spaces. So the Fox City's Y and the Appleton branch are the biggest in Wisconsin, believe it or not, wow. not Milwaukee, not Madison, um, in the way we've grown. But yeah, there is something for everybody at the Y, which is ex- very, very exciting. So, I, and I always forget too. We talk sports, but but preschool as well. I mean, I yeah. I went to preschool there. My <laughs> kids went to pre. I mean, we're talking fifty years of uh, you know my family going to preschool there. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. Daycare, daycare is probably one of the, as we, you may hear and see, and I don't know, I'm guessing, just guessing you guys are out of this phase of life, but <laughs> the child care, um, the child care need is, is greater than ever, right? Right. Dual work right. families. We probably are all part of that, but back to respond to the community, um, child care and after school care is one of the biggest needs literally that we do. And, and so people think fitness classes and sports and such, but, um, you know, back to the why, you know, adapting to what the community needs. That's you're right. That's exactly what it is. So I can't imagine now 25 years from now, what people are going to be saying their first experience was might've been that. And you even have branched out into after school programs in the schools themselves as well, which is a yeah. huge, huge piece for, I mean, so many working mm-hmm. families and, uh, and parents in yeah. this area as well. Yeah, that is true. That's a truly mission driven program because, um, again, the, the diversity of our community, no matter what you are, parents need that care and they just want to make sure it's in a safe place. And so, yeah, each day, I mean, our, our staff team, I cannot take credit. I just, the team that I have, 
get to work with 6 a.m. in the morning, they're at a school because parents have to drop off before school yeah. and they're there till 6 p.m. at night. And, and so um, the why the why doesn't just start and end in the building downtown. It, it's there's 12 different schools we're at each and every day. Yeah. So it's pretty impressive. <laughs> Have you seen in the 25 years that you've been there, and I, I, there's been a lot of changes, certainly with social media, just technology, things like that. Have the kids changed? Tosh and I are kind of fascinated by this question. Have the kids changed over those 25 years? Or, I mean, are they still coming to the gym on Saturday morning and, and playing pickup games? Yeah. You know, that's that's a great question because I think we all want to say they do, but truly – it, they don't. It's, yeah. it's it's very, very similar. So if you guys might re- you remember this Saturday morning, I mean, why members always are on my case, no matter what predecessor for me, they come want to come down on Saturday mornings to play basketball and just shoot hoops. Right. But we know that before, again, my time, the Saturday mornings at the Y is youth basketball. Right. Yeah, right. Um, you know, <laughs> December through February. And so, you know, from eight in the morning through, you know, to about two in the afternoon, three sometimes it's all youth teams, volunteers, kids. But then right after that, there is, I mean, the teenagers know when that last, that last uh, horn rings that they can get in the gym and it's cool because they pick up chairs, they help pick up garbage because so they can play and then it'll be busy the whole time. But um, no, you still, you don't get the only option that it used to be. I think the Y used to be the only option. I mean, every out of school, off school day, it would be full of kids. Yeah. Now, obviously the accessibility of parents getting kids different places and, and more opportunities, but um, so maybe not as much, but it is still there very much. So, and, uh, and you still get kids that, you know, still get the same, same kids, same personalities, same troublemakers, you know, same <laughs> athletes. Um, yeah. And, uh, and again, you, you watch it just happen in, no matter what the what what the year is, I guess you could say. It's cool to see those kids grow up and what they turn into and, and, and how their personality develops. And yeah, you remember little little Johnny running around and then on the court. It's 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 pretty cool to see. Yeah. And, you know, there's obviously men's pickup basketball has always uh, been a thing early mornings or Saturday yeah. mornings and and such. And so then when you start seeing these teenagers, they, the guys, will, older guys will let the, them play if they're pretty good. And and so you get a mix of, of that. And again, where where does that happen? But the why, right? Where right. teenagers are actually accepted, uh, you know, the, to the older group and, and not put put off. And uh, so it's kind of it's cool to watch that evolution happen. Um, I'll never forget one time when Brian Butch was in high school or come, he came back from maybe Madison one summer. And I'm like, what is he doing playing with these pickup guys? <laughs> like, they don't care, right? They'll throw an elbow to anybody. <laughs> yeah. But, but Brian Butch grew up at our Y, right? He right, knew, right. you know, and so he came to shoot around and just like anything, you don't just shoot around, you see a game and you jump in it. And um, so there's so many of those high school, you know, good athletes that no matter what, they, they come to the Y and it's uh it's, you're just like everybody else, no matter you know, no matter the age, the skill level, or the the name. I I think that you know, going back to what Joe said, in this area for sure, in the Fox Cities, um, most kids get their first taste of sports and first taste of any activity coming to the Y, uh, whether it's you know not maybe not a member, but playing different you know, the five year old flag football or soccer or basketball, all of those types of things. Um, is that something that you guys have really tried to hold on to and make sure that this is a cornerstone for you? Yeah, it, that's, that's, that's a great question. And, and probably some I'm most proud of is, so it's always been that. And if we all know the opportunities continue to grow in the community, right. And I was talking about that flag football opportunity or, or basketball on Saturday mornings, but traditionally as things more options grow we said we had to talk to ourselves and go what is our main focus right and that is exactly it we know we want to get these young families and these kids an opportunity because as we know and it's happened in all of our generation we've probably seen it with our kids is you get you get your opportunities slimmed down because if you're not good enough or you're not committed enough or you don't want to whatever that might be um we want to make sure that there was an opportunity. And so back in maybe 15 years ago now, and I was just in my latter years of being the sports director um, and had a little bit more, I guess, influence of, of and being a veteran a little bit more to know this, but we made a decision as a why to what we did is we included five of the major sports into our membership. Okay. So if you had a family membership, you got that, that league for free. 
So you didn't even have to pay. It put value to a membership, right? But ultimately, though, those parents then didn't have to pay 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever it was at the time, to put their child in something. And, and you never know, at kindergarten or first grade or second grade or third grade, they may not like it. They, you know, it might not be a good experience. Now you have, you're financially vested and you put time in it. And But this way they could try it and see what they like early on and in a wholesome environment. So since that's like 15 years now, and I truly believe it's been double fold. It's more people were introduced to the Y because it's yep. a value to them to be a Y member. Yep. And they get to see all the other things you alluded to earlier. But we've had more kids than ever believe it or not, come through the program because of that. Right. And and they go on. I mean, as we know, like I said, Pop Warner used to start in fifth or sixth grade, right? It starts in second or third grade now. And Hoops Club start in second or third grade at the high schools where it used to be like sixth, seventh grade. And so we know they move on quicker, but we still offer from kindergarten all the way through sixth grade that, that opportunity to do introductory sports at a very low fee or none if you're a Y member. Um, and awesome. so... Yeah, just last year alone, 7,000. We had 7,000 kids between our four branches that offer sports that did that participate in one of those big, big um, um, sports leagues. Wow. So that gives you a power in numbers sometimes on Saturday mornings or weeknights or whenever we offer those. Um, it's it's pretty impressive. It, and you have like an impressive like dance program as well, I, I think, don't you? I, I know um, – Compet- yep, competitive yep. dance. Yep, competitive dance, and then uh, gymnastics, gymnastics as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Swim team as well. So competitive swim team. So sure. Um, yeah, there's 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 those levels of those high levels of sports too. It's not just introductory. Um, so um, some of those unique opportunities again in the Y in the Y world, if you will. I know we joked about everybody learning to swim at the Y, but I'm, I'm it, that's pretty close to the truth, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people <laughs> learn to swim at the Y, don't they? That's yeah. That's still a cornerstone program for us. Um, every, you know, when we, when we have pools, we take that as a responsibility. I mean, we know high schools, they don't even build pools, right? right. Because right. The, the costs, the, the regulations, the, the safety, the, the staffing it takes. But since we have pools, we, uh, we make that a priority for us. And you, everybody does. Again, I don't care who we are. That's, that's where you're going to go learn to swim for the most part. <laughs> um, and then that's that's been for many many years and one of the you know earliest whys that's what that's where they learned to swim because that's where swim lessons came from in the Y out east where whys became popular you know in this country as obviously the country evolved um there was drowning pandemics kids were drowning every and so again however it came to they came to the Y and said ymca would you come up with a swim lessons program. And I mean, I'm talking back in the early 1900s. Okay. And so that was a thing, and guess what? As YMCA's evolved, they said in this community, that's what they do, help kids learn how to swim. And, and so that's how it kind of came to today. Hey, Newsicast listeners, help us grow by subscribing wherever you get your pods or sharing the Newsicast. Follow us on Facebook, X. TikTok or Instagram. Northeastern Wisconsin Sports Advancement is a 501c3 organization. Our mission is to raise money, provide support, and bring greater awareness for youth sports organizations in Northeast Wisconsin. We do this primarily through the Red Smith Sports Award Banquet and the NoosaCast. Each year, we give back to the community through three initiatives the Every Kid Plays Grant the Gives Back Initiative, and scholarships to student athletes. We mentioned this before. I just I love how it's just, it's a part of the city. It's a fabric of the city. It, it reminds me during Mile of Music, the beautiful murals that you have now in those back oh. alley, right? There's this you really, really cool. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's, yeah, those, uh, um, a local artist, you might know him, his Irenio Medina, yeah. Neo Medina, right? Yep. He's the one who done that. So, uh, Eric, if you would know this, if you're in the school district, so they, yeah. I don't know if you heard this really cool story. I'll, I'll quick uh, share it in a, in a nutshell, but they did do this thing called paint the city where they take 25 kids from all the high schools, the three different high schools, if, if more. Um, and those are kids who are in a vulnerable spot in life, whatever mm-hmm. it might be. And they select them and with teachers from those high schools and they pick a location and do a mural and they want to pick a location 
that is going to be identifiable to kids, right? right. And they've done it at, at the Boys and Girls Club. And they've done it at the Y in one other place. But to watch these, again, these 25 kids, they came to our Y for two weeks straight. We They, they walked in the first time. And again, I th- don't think many have been there and sadly never had the opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, and by the two weeks are over, you should have seen the pride they had, the comfort they had in the Y. Um, our, our team provided them all Y memberships to come. Um, you know, we have a charitable giving, you know, through our annual campaign that does stuff just for these type of situations. And so, yeah, those murals, it, it comes from the community, truly. Wow. And this artist who had the mo- this artist who has honestly the passion and the um, way to connect and, and a gift, obviously, too, that he shared with us. I love it. That, that, that back alley is so cool. Uh, it's it's it, especially during Mile of Music, but just generally just to walk back there it's 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 comforting it's pretty cool to see we made a nice for jim's place in the one nickel which we all maybe have a familiarity with so <laughs> that's right <laughs> staples of the town and then and then the y <laughs> <laughs> exactly how is, is, is space in the y i know you guys uh, a few years ago redid kind of the lobby and and uh, obviously the parking ramp is up now i mean are you guys in a pretty good spot as far as is space and where, where you want to be or are, are you always looking to to expand and change yeah, I mean, our, so our YMC of the Fox Cities as a whole um, have 50,000, 51,000 members now. And that's just members. Wow. There's participants that are, that are non-members that come and play in basketball or swim lessons and such. But 51,000, you know, when I started the Y, we had 10,000 at the Appleton Y, right? And, and so to watch it grow, like you said, Eric, the Ogden YMCA, mm-hmm. which is the old, you know, a tennis center and um, our Apple Creek facility, which was, oh, yeah. was a donation from the Purdy family yep. and to make sure that that stayed a, a, a nature preserve, if you will. And um, so again, back to that 51,000 people, our Appleton Y downtown has just over 12,000 members. And so we're right at that point where, you know, the way people use it and, and I wouldn't say we're at a capacity by any means. The only downfall with our apps and why it's almost 70 years old. <laughs> right. And so as uh, now in my role today, trying to manage an old building um, is, is definitely can be a challenge. But so we do look ahead, like what is our future, right? What's the next 10 years look like, um, both for our Appleton and Nina facilities to make sure we're positioned um, and, and whenever that right opportunity comes to either renovate our Y or build a new Y, um, you know, the one thing I'm pretty confident for, yeah, and if I, since I have an influence, hopefully of that decision too, is we'll always be in the heart of where we're at in downtown. Okay. Um, yeah. Because, That's good. I mean, I feel like the Y has to be downtown, at least yeah, one yeah. Y has to be downtown. Yeah. It's, I mean, all our, if it gives you any indication of how important that was uh, about, you know, 10 years ago, um, our CEO, Bill Brighter, he, uh, he said, if we're going to bring all our corporate offices, you know, our HR offices, our business office, they were scattered amongst all the Ys and they all want to be a one under one roof. And we made space for them at our branch because they knew the Appleton Y was very important to our organization. Um, And as downtown Appleton kept changing, um, you know, and, and uh, just making sure that those changes, I don't care if they're roads, U.S. venture talks, ramps, right. whatever. We said we had to make, make sure we we're valued downtown. And uh, secondly, um, we wanted to make sure the commitment of if, you know, if we have that, those co- partnerships and collaborations, we would be there. But um, and from a, a from a giving standpoint, we at that time that we evaluated that we identified over 100 partnerships somewhere in the Appleton area that sent around downtown that we wanted to make sure that if we weren't downtown, I, we don't know if they'd happen. If it was with Harbor house or pillars, the schools right. essentially yeah. located for all the schools. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's very important, our location. And I think we have definitely uh, strong partners in the, in the city as well. Yeah. I, you mentioned partners and I think anytime you look at sponsors or different things like that, you're a partner for so many different organizations. It's, yeah. it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, we sometimes our, our hardest part is we don't know how to say no. And sometimes we have to remember we can't do it all. We yeah. can't be everything to everybody. But I'll tell you, the only way we learn that usually is by saying yes a, a lot of times. And very rarely do you regret saying yes to something, right? right. Um, because, again, and that's probably how the why became successful as it was, you know, saying yes to what was needed and then finding creative ways to do that and, and having the, the staff talent that we're fortunate to have you know, to have the passion to do it. Right. <laughs> we're still a community organization and, and um, it's a labor of love. Right. And so we're, we're very fortunate to have 
passion driven um, um, employees to do that. You uh, get it back to the to the I, I you know I love the the downtown building. You know, seventy years old. There's a lot of uh, nooks and crannies. Do you, do you ever get tired walking the building? I mean, there's a lot of. I feel like every time I walk through that building, I discover something new. Yeah, no, it's it's. I mean, the cool part about our building is um, it's been renovated how many times, right? The wellness center at one time was a gym. Now it's a wellness center. There's a whole different pool and gym on the. Actually, that's in a different building. You have to walk underneath the right. alley into a different building. And I, when I give a tour, I always share people going, we're in a different building than the entrance was. And they go, what? They go, you actually came under an alley and you're in the Orbison gym or the Buchanan pool, yeah. um, and which is kind of the back area. I mean, there's a lap swim pool and a big gym and you guys probably recognize that. But yeah. um, there is, I mean, one of the coolest things that that is that I do and I do it intentionally and, and when we have new staff, but... I was telling our staff team, one of the coolest thing is to open that building in the morning because when you open it, that's a big place. And I go, it's the most serene, amazing place when you walk around that building. And then for a second, you go, this is kind of creepy, man. This building is huge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's a lot of spaces that you won't even realize. And so, um, yeah, but we, every ounce of that building, every inch of that building is uh, utilized. There's not, a, you know, a lot of buildings that size are not utilized. There's dead spaces you know, or what have you, but, um, we may, we, we utilize it all, which is amazing. Well, that's going to be a great way to start the morning. Then I, that's going to be incredible just to walk a quiet building like that. Yeah. <laughs> 175,000 square feet of a building. Yes. Wow. Oh, so yeah, I love that. Yeah. But there's a lot of history in those walls. If they could talk, can you guys imagine <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> the pickup games imagine. that happen, uh, yeah. oh. what happens in the pool and the people that have come through, obviously big, some of our biggest community right. leaders, you think about it and, uh, you know, everybody and everybody and anybody, you know, that's the, that's the cool part. I can never emphasize enough. Yeah, a absolutely. I mean, you know, the more we talk about this interview and, and just thinking about, like we said, the fabric of the why it's just, it's always been there. It's a part of us in, in your planning meetings with, with all the growth now that is going on in, in downtown Appleton, the, 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 the building and the, the, seems like all the residentials that, that are coming down there it's really got to be i guess exciting for you guys right i mean i would i would imagine that that would, would help membership as well being being where you're located yeah i, I def, most definitely um as you know where we're positioned um on on this you know next to lawrence university right that we we continue to have strength and partnership with with that uh, the leadership there the newest mm -hmm. leadership they've had over there in the last few years has been fantastic okay. The, the number of different relationships we have in the city. So when development um, is happening downtown, they're, you know, sharing with us what's going on and, and what have you to us venture has been fantastic partner as well. When, you know, when they didn't know what they were doing, they came to look at our why and said, you know, if we're going to be down there, you know, you know, wanted to make sure we know what, you know, is available to our, our team as well. And so, so I just give a, a few quick nuggets there, but yeah, we're, we're kept in the know and, and we're asked to, you know, we're asked to connect with different groups as they come downtown, if it's a new business or if it's a development. And so it, it does give a, a, a motivation, right? That again, like I was saying earlier, that we're in a great spot. Our location is a great right. spot it, and people are, as downtown continues to, you know, rejuvenate itself constantly, yeah. um, that we're right in that right spot for, for people. If we stand on the front steps and look south in 10 years, I mean, are we going to be what are we going to see? Do you think? What, what's your gut tell you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, well, it depends what U.S. Venture. You know, that's a question for them more than us. Uh, yeah, right. Again, they were a great partner by letting us use that um, space in the interim for parking for our members. Right. Um, you know, when we had a that ramp is the, the ramp next to the Y is actually the YMCA ramp. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we had to build that and again, not too many executive directors got to build a ramp or <laughs> had the opportunity to build a ramp. <laughs> um, but that's so in that meantime, um, yeah, us venture was very helpful there, but that, and so was the city of Appleton cause that's not zoned to be a parking lot, if you will, but they both work together to provide that. Um, and so as us venture now is making their move, um, to the two, two, two building, I think there's some questions on what their future and, and so, yeah, so I, yeah, we're not, uh, we, we don't really know right now, but sure. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll look, it's very exciting to see, but again, whoever, whoever, and whatever, they're going to be next to the Y, which is great. What's it take to be a ramp builder? 
<laughs> a lot of patience and, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, and, and just uh, learning something new every day. So I'll bet. Uh, I'll when bet. we invested in that ramp, again, if anybody said, well, the YB downtown, well, that's a $7 million ramp, right, that right. we had to build. And so it was that important to keep parking easily accessible and free, right? And, and so every Y member parks are free when they come to the Y. And so no matter what farmer's market or, you know, mile of music, they have to pay like everybody else, but right, the y, right. they get to come for free. And we want to guarantee that to be the case. And if we would, you know, have parking in another, you know, way, you know, we don't know if a developer or whoever else, we couldn't guarantee that. And, and this way we guarantee that that's going you know, to make it accessible and easier for people to come. Right. Right. Uh, you know, we talked about all the different sports as they've evolved. It seems like the latest craze and, and, and maybe more along our age, uh, the, the pickleballers. How, how is what's pickleball been like from, from the wise perspective? It's uh, yeah, it's a crowd. It is amazing to see the, you know, kind of the birth of a new program, or new, a new sport that, you know, like I remember when. Again, now we all can say, I'm going to put you in, you know, right. We'll, we'll say we're all the same age, right? But <laughs> yeah. um, soccer, right. right? We never saw soccer, right? When we were growing up, did we? Very, right. very exactly. little soccer. We watched that grow to now what it is. And so we have to watch that a little bit. And I remember people even talking down to, you know, this new craze of a sport called soccer or what have you coming to the area. And now pickleball, same thing. It's like, what, you know, about, I remember when we, it came to the Y, we, we had lines and we put it down because out outside of our region, we heard that pickleball is a thing. And I remember we all as a staff team had to learn how to do it. So <laughs> when people came in who didn't know how to play or they had only two or three people, they needed one more. They could just we had a, like a on call, like call this staff member at this time. They'll go play with you just so they could get the game going like a yeah. pickup game. So, you know, I don't remember. can't think how many years ago that was now. But we had staff ready to play and learn the game. And again, we didn't know it either. Um, and so now, I mean, every day of the week, f- seven days a week, if if it was, I would say it was the pickup basketball re- rewind about 25 years ago. That's what it was. Every single day a week, if you let them have a court, pickleball players would be playing. And what is amazing is it's not just older adults. Yeah. I mean, it is, I mean, you have teenagers playing up to, you know, again, I say 80, 80 plus years old playing in pickleball, different levels. Now they want competitive levels. They want introductory levels, but, um, but yeah, if you come down there, why every morning from about eight o'clock in the morning till about two in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, it is full. The, the McGuire gym is full with three pickleball courts going nonstop. Yeah, that that is you're right. It's crazy just to watch that sport absolutely explode in just a couple of years. It seems like. Yeah, yeah, and and Jen, what, what, go back a couple of years. What were these people? You know, what was their activity? So yeah. for them to have a new outlet um, is amazing. But I will tell you what is cool for me, and you guys know it. Growing up, right? Some of your probably best friends are your kids, the the parents of the kids you're you know that had sports together. Yeah the social outlet usually ends up being the the legacy of, of those. Right. And yeah. to watch these pickleball players, the community of socialization and connection, and, you know, they're going out to breakfast and happy hours and whatever else you hear them talk and um, doing potlucks in their why after, you know, <laughs> after different, it, it's really cool to see the social connection. Cause ultimately let's be honest, it's, it's this world that's becoming more isolated. Yeah. Um, we're continuing to be a hub where, where it connects people and one another. Ah, uh, that's so huge, so huge to to have that. And the older I get, I think the more I appreciate that too. We we need each other. We we got to talk to each other, right? Hang out with each other, right? That personal interaction is so valuable. <laughs> you know, no doubt. We talk. We've talked all you know a lot about different sports and stuff, but the why isn't just sports. You have so many other programs that uh, for people in the community as well. Yeah, yeah, we yeah most definitely. I know we were trying to jump it around there, but. Um, like I said, the, the, the kids in school, the child care, our fitness classes, you know, just in our association, I, if you looked at all of our branches, you know, I don't care if it's yoga or cycling or, uh, you know, a boot camp or what have you, yeah. I would say there's probably over 200 classes in a, in a week's time that you could go to. And if you're a Y member, it doesn't cost anything for the most part to go unless it's a personal training or something. But, you know, even our downtown Y, you know, each week there's probably close to 60, 60, 70 classes you could go to. So it fits everybody's interest. So from that health outlet, 
Um, and then, you know, from the wellness that we know to the sports we've talked about to the, the things in our pool. I mean, just from every, the lap swimmers opening our pool at 5 a.m., jumping in and putting your toe in the water. I will tell you, if you want to live a long life, I will tell you, put I'll put lap swimmers up against anybody because, I mean, honestly, till their last uh, last days, I mean, they're swimming in that pool and coming out. So I don't know what, what chlorine does, but, <laughs> but they're some of the most active, healthy people are swimmers. And so, um, yeah, so that kind of shares a little bit about, uh, you know, about a wide variety of, of what we do. And each Y now is getting a, di- a different, you know, identity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a huge environmental center at our Ap- Apple Creek facility. Yeah. We have tennis at, at the Ogden Y. And um, and as I was sharing, the, the Kimberly Y has a gymnastics, you know, center that, you know, most Ys would love to have. Um, yeah. And so just I just share a few nuggets there. Um, that just has some identity and uniqueness, but any other part, just getting out in the community too, that we, we try to do and, and help and partner where, wherever it might be. Yeah. The, the, I, I always forget about the Purdy Y, but you're right. I mean, the trails that you have out, out there <clears throat> is so accessible. It's, it's very unique. And, and I, I, shame on me for forgetting that one. <laughs> yeah. It's this time of year. Um, yeah, good, good place to go take a hike for sure. Yeah. And Absolutely. I think people forget it's in that very beautiful neighborhood, right? And, right. and it, that was the that's that was the um, magic of that uh, that gift, I guess, because the the Purdy family wanted to make sure that that wasn't just a, a a a nice neighborhood with beautiful homes. It was intermixed that it was going to always stay the nature preserve of what it was, and that and per, per, preserve that land. Yeah, no, that, that that's really cool to see. Uh, the gymnastics as well. How did that? that come about as well. I mean, cause that there, there's another sport too. That's it's, I'm sure a lot of people would love to try gymnastics, but there, there's not many outlets for that, but what an incredible use of space in that. Why to, 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 you know, to have a, a, I remember now it's, it's all coming back. I remember my, my kids going into the foam pit and yeah. learning to walk the balance beam and all that. It's fantastic. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, they, before again, before the Kimberly Y was built, the heart of the Valley Y, there was a just a little warehouse building that they were doing gymnastics and that's it was right behind um the mcdonald's there right right off by where the y is and um but yeah just in that little industrial park there's a warehouse they did gymnastics there before y building was even built and they were doing there for a long period of time and um, again doing this youth opportunity in a way that includes all no matter what your level was um, I think that was that kind of just continued to grow as and we still have a competitive team that competes, you know, both on the state with other state wise and nationally, you know, so same with our swim team, very similar model. So do you guys just if, if somebody comes? So in those early days, somebody wants to we need to do gymnastics in Kimberly and they come to you, <clears throat> you guys are just figuring out how to how to put that program together, how to make it happen. Just use your creative ability and just make it happen. Yeah, if it was only that easy, right? right. <laughs> but, uh, but no, you it, it kind of starts with an idea, right? Everything starts with a vision. Um, and, you know, we usually we look for a few, th- few things. What, you know, who's all involved with this? And how do we how do we make sure that everybody's values align uh, mm-hmm. for what it might be? And then and then obviously there's a, a, a sustainability in not only in financially, but in people, right? Making sure that there's the right talent making sure there's a right, you know, the right support and volunteerism that comes behind everything. Um, and, and to make sure that the resources are, are used wisely to serve whatever that, you know, that program might be. So, yeah, so we, we look at all those things and, uh, and then, yeah, just see where, where it makes sense. Is, is it been a struggle to find uh, like instructors? Uh, you, you talk about all the great classes you have. Is that a challenge for you to find good instructors and then structures that stay on year after year? Yeah, that's a great, that's a, you know, it's, it's really interesting, right? So we have over 1500 employees, you know, one of the, one of the, you know, that's a large, you know, large amount of employees, but of those over three quarters are part-time, mm-hmm. you know, they you know, work five to 10 hours a week, right? If it's fitness, if it's coaching sports, if it's a lifeguard, um, what have you. Um, and so, so we have quite a few of them. And again, it's not, we always have ebb and flow and, um, with the talent and the age, like I was saying earlier, um, and, and we always try to just find a way to connect, but usually, usually we, you know, we're very successful at that. 
Um, it just really meeting the next group of people who might might have that opportunity in, in their life in the skill set. And the Y does such a good job. We, I, again, I'll say it, you know, a number of times we have good people and yeah. who have big hearts who love other people. And usually we can teach you the rest, whatever it might be, you know, obviously <laughs> that's, a, they taught me how to, you know, do many things in my 25 years. So you know, back to maybe why I just have, just have a little passion and love for people and you're going to be successful at the Y. And so and it's very identifiable when we interview somebody or recruit somebody um, and, and they want to be part of something great. Right. And, and, and again, that's what the Y has been for many, many years. It's one of the things I've always admired about any instructor, whether it's been a boot camp, you know, instructor yoga, cycling, they, they all, you're right, they have that passion. It's basically a lifestyle for them. They, they, it's not even work. It's just they're pouring out passion every one of those classes. And it, it comes through and it's motivation. And then it's, I think it helps the, the participants when the instructors are, are like that. You, you want to go to class. Yeah. And, and Eric, you speak to it now being a, the big guy as a principal, right? You see it on your staff teams and, yeah. um, um, you know, and working with, working with, uh, the number of different, you know, talents that you need, right. but, uh, it, it comes down to just, they got to love kids, right. Yeah. In, in that scenario and, and connect with parents. And, and we look for the same type of individuals and, um, you know, and again, we get to we get to watch that because we're probably the biggest partnership we have is with the Appleton Area School District. Right. So, you know, that's um, something we're very, very proud of. And so to watch and and we see staff that bounce between our two organizations, to tell you the truth, Absolutely. a lot of times and share a lot of those staff teams. And so, um, yeah, so that's very cool. Well, Tom, I know I I, I don't want to keep you too long. We, we appreciate I mean, one, it's uh, Tasha and I should have had you on earlier because, I mean, the why, like we said, has been a huge part of all, all our lives. So it's, it's been great to just kind of dig into it and just really talk about the why and, and how important it is and the programs that you offer. I mean, I feel like we just scratched the surface on what you offered. I mean, obviously, check out the website, check out your catalogs that, that get mailed. I mean, there there's hundreds and hundreds of programs, but it was really cool to get to know you and just just shoot the bull. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been very fortunate to, to be around good people. And, you know, one thing I maybe didn't share earlier is the number of volunteers, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm, if any, you, I'm sure you guys have coached at the Y in some form or fashion, right? <laughs> oh Absolutely. yeah. You know, so I was, I was thinking about that and going, um, just alone, you know, when I was talking about all the kids that are in all these youth sports programs. So between all our wives, Last year alone, we had 800 volunteer coaches. Wow. If you oh, think incredible. about it, 800, like all the people that, you know, that's just amazing to me. It always just, you know, it always just blows me away um, that, that each and every, each and every person has a, has kind of a, you know, a part of our success mm -hmm. and, you know, and that success is really a, a, an impression on a kid, right? And right. Hopefully they, we have all the right ones, you know, we're all not the greatest coaches and <laughs> no, right. I mean, but again, they're, they're all there for the right reason which is, which is pretty amazing. And so, um, yeah. And, and to be able to do it for everybody, that's the other cool part that not everybody knows about the why that, you know, each year where, I mean, the why is a charity, we don't say no very well, right. Yeah, so right. Financial situation or the school district comes with, you know, we do some PE classes for the school district and we partner with some of the schools to get a memberships at some of the charter type schools or alternative schools yep. to come down to our why, you know, that all still has to be paid for in some way. But like last year alone, of all of our wives, we had, you know, we have to, we gave away over almost $2 million wow. in subsidy if you counted it. And so yeah. each year when we, we raise money, um, you know, not everybody gets to hear all these things that we got to talk about today. And so I, I can't be remiss and not proud, more proud that, um, that we, no matter what it is, we can serve so many people, yeah. young to old, no matter the financial situation, no matter, you know, whatever their level of interest and skills, right? It's all there, so. That's awesome. No, I'm glad you said that, and you, you're absolutely <laughs> right. You forget about that. I mean, the why is it? it heart they're a charity and it, it's uh we, we forget about that you you think of them sometimes as a business and that that's not really the case 
Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, yeah. Thank you for appreciating that too. And you guys have been part of that though, you know, so that's cool. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, we, we love the why we did. It was, like I said, it was fantastic to, to talk to you. I, I learned a ton, and that's what we love doing. That's yeah. why we love doing the Noosa cast. And hopefully we'll be back to the Red Smith Banquet and having our, you know, we, we're so proud to have the Coach of the Year at the Red Smith yeah, Banquet. Right. And we of those 800 volunteers, that's what I was going to lead into is we've taken, you know, that was a big thing. Those coaches got nominated, and they got to go to that banquet. And I will tell you, I mean, I got to go as a sports director at the time. And uh, and to get to introduce these sport, these coaches and they were just in awe like of the banquet and being there. And so we still carry that through. We still have each of our branch has coach of the year. Good. Oh, that's good to hear. Branches. So now if whenever we, you know, the four coaches of the year or four or five that each branch has, then we would nominate one of them to be the Red Smith winner. Um, nice. So we continue to do that. So we're waiting for Red Smith to come back and, and, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and highlight them. But. Um, no, many good years at the Red Smith Banquet that I was always proud and and as a sports guy, right? Right. It was always just fun yeah. to be. Just this same, like I said, candid conversations. That was always. I don't know what you did to these celebrity sports people that made them feel <laughs> so comfortable that they would just, yeah. It's our Midwest hospitality, right? I know. I'll never forget Barry Alvarez and uh, Tommy Bowden. Maybe they're going almost back and forth the same year, you know, jabbing each other. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, you would think they're like us, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's good stuff. Hope that continues <laughs> no, I, on. And thank you guys for continuing, the, you know, the legacy of it. No, absolutely. And I, I don't know if the Red Smith Banquet will come back, but in some form we want to have some kind of live event. And, and at the heart, we're doing the same thing. It's, it's, it's for youth sports through uh-huh. – you know, however we give give our money at, at the end of the day, it's all going back into the community, all going to youth sports. And right. sports has been a huge part of our lives. You, you never know where it's going to take you. But we just know that that foundation early <clears throat> on is huge. Yeah. Amen to that right there. Right? <laughs> well said. Right, well, right. once in a while I get lucky, so I better hit end record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eric's like, good. Now you don't have to bail you <laughs> All right, NoosaCast listeners, welcome to our throwback. Uh, Remember, you're on the podcast, so you're going to hear just a clip of the Max McGee from 1985. Legendary Packer played from 54 to 67. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe even more famous, at least for some of us, being the radio play-by-play announcer with Jim Irwin as well. And Larry McCarran joined that booth as well. But Oh my gosh, Tosh, we're, we're in a great stretch. We found that 1985 tape. Taylor cleaned it up for us. So we had Tommy Lasorda last week, and he talked about Max McGee. They were both at the same banquet in 1985 at the, I believe it was at the Country Air back then yet. We weren't quite at the Paper Valley yet. Um, but yeah, he uh, he talks about Max, and, and that was one of probably one of the best banquets ever, certainly in the heyday. Yeah, so this is great. You know, if you want to check out the entire uh, interview, uh, you can, or speech, really, you can go back on Sunday and listen to it on our YouTube channel. You got it, Tosh. We say this every week, but we have a terrific catalog built up, and it is pretty cool. I've had, I've actually had several people now just kind of mention how, how they love listening to to some of these old ones actually steve uh the, the letter carrier steve mentioned he, he loved pat williams you know i mean there's some legendary people some some folks that you probably haven't thought about in in years but people that you'll certainly recognize and when they came to the banquet uh yeah listen to him for 20 25 minutes there's certainly tommy lasorda you're gonna laugh and and i i know you will with max as well they're just they're lol funny tosh <laughs> well Sit back, enjoy this clip. Sunday, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe and like, and enjoy the full interview. Red Smith Sports Awards. Banquet throwback. The Red Smith Award, of course, goes to someone who has made some unique contributions to sport in Wisconsin. And also epitomizes the great values that Red Smith exhibited. 
Let's give a Red Smith welcome. Nineteen eighty five Red Smith Sports Award presented to Max McGee for outstanding contributions to sports in Wisconsin as a great player with the Green Bay Packers and now a member of the Packer radio broadcast team. Ladies and gentlemen, Max McGee. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Judge uh, Cannon. Uh, if Vince were here, I know he'd be happy because they sent me between two judges. <laughs> you know, they, <laughs> In training camp, uh, for some reason, Horning and I always room between two coaches, and I never could figure out why. I was always kind of a, as they say, a curfew violator, and it probably, most times, it wasn't really true, but people thought I was sneaking out and chasing girls and drinking whiskey, and actually, I was coming down here and rolling dice with Danny Ornstein. <laughs> And I think the reason they made me this recipient this year, he wanted to visit his money. <laughs> but I guess uh, in some way uh, I am known more maybe by curfew violations than some other things, but finally they recognized some talent. <laughs> And I busted my buns off for 14 years with the Packers and never got any awards. I go out and start a little company doing 700 million and now I'm the man of the year. <laughs> well, anyway, speaking of curfew, you know, I roomed 10 years with Paul Horning, otherwise I'm sure I'd still be playing. <laughs> Paul and I, we used to get to, I never figured this out. Maybe Tommy could help me. You know, we'd get to training camp, and it's two weeks, two workouts a day, a meeting at night, curfew at 11. You got out about five minutes a day. And after about two weeks, boy, that gets pretty tough. And all at once he says, now, after the scrimmage, all you married guys go home and with your wives and have a good time. Horning, you and McGee, 11 o'clock curfew. <laughs> and I never thought that was fair, so I told Paul one time, I said, I've got a way to stop this garbage. So that night, it was Vince's night to, for curfew check, and I remember it because it's a true story. I said, Paul, when at 11 o'clock, we're going to push our beds together. We'll get buck naked. We'll put our arms around each other, and when Vince opens the door, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here come. <laughs> sure enough, uh, you know, sure enough, 11 o'clock, right on time. He was never a minute late for curfew. I never figured that out. He opened that door, and if you ever see an Italian with wild eyes, <laughs> of course, the, uh, the tragic part was that Horning liked it so much I had to move out. <laughs> of course, uh, Tommy wouldn't understand that because they all sleep that way out in Hollywood. What tells the difference? But, you know, back to the, uh, back to the Red Smith Award. By the way, who was Red Smith? <laughs> He's got a beautiful wife, but I never got to meet Red. Did you? That's all right. We've heard enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> you know, I think as you get awards uh, throughout your life, and I've had a few, and I've been very grateful, but I think the really the best awards are the ones that you get from people you know and are friendly with and... Uh, and that's why I'm so happy tonight. This is an award that was definitely given and awarded me by people that I've lived with and been associated with. And for that, I'm extremely grateful. And I thank you all very much. And good luck, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, all right, Tosh. I love that throwback to Max McGee. Nice work on Taylor to get it all edited for us. But it's been pretty cool to go back to 1985. We had Tommy Lasorda last week, Max McGee this week. You got to love it, Tosh. Well, we're almost to the end of another show, but we always like to end it with a little It's Forgotten and I'm Never Forgetting. So what's forgotten in your world, Tosh, well, this week? I never can quite figure out how, and maybe somebody needs to tell me how the WIAA does their bracketing <laughs> for high school sports because I, I, don't, I don't quite understand. I mean, the big one around here, is you have North playing Kimberly the last game of the season, and then you have North playing Kimberly right away in yeah. in the brackets. I I don't quite get that. Um, it seems a shame. And then you could have Kimberly and Nina play each other in the second level, which again seems like that that's that doesn't seem right. So <laughs> these brackets, I want to computer doesn't lie, Tash. Computer <laughs> yeah, doesn't lie. I, is it a computer? Are they pulling? Pulling teams out of a hat? I don't, I don't know. But uh, I'm sure if somebody is with the WIA, they would not like me to be saying that. But yeah. they have a tough job, and they do all the sports across Wisconsin. So um, I, you know, kudos to them for everything that they do. I just, I just don't under, quite understand some of the rankings. But I wish I could help you. I, I don't either. It's it's strange as can be, and and. It always seems to be that way. And I guess, honestly, if you look at it, people complain about the sweet or about the NCAA tournament. They complain about, you know, NFL seeding. Sometimes that happens as well. Teams play back to back. But yeah, it's it's a little weird in high school and especially, you know, big schools. But it's I guess more than anything, Tosh, you and I were talking before. It's kind of a testament to the strength of football in this area. There's just so many good teams that it's inevitable that two good teams are going to match up in rounds, you know, levels one right. and two. And, you know, it may be in years past, those were more of a level three, four kind of games, but just there's so many good teams. Now they're playing earlier in the playoffs. That's true. That's a good point. So, well, I will, uh, I'll forget about that. And Joe, yeah. what, what do you want to forget? Well, Tosh, I, I know what's being forgotten. It's sunlight. <laughs> it, it's just, it goes away quicker. I you know complained a little bit earlier in the, in the show about all the political mail that we're delivering and we're delivering mail later at night. And that headlamp now is coming out at like five 30. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much dark at six. I, I, I know, or I, I know the sun sets now before 6 PM. So we, we don't, you know, we're, we're, we're getting into darkness, yeah. Tosh. It's all part of the cycle. Yeah, it is. I go to school in dark now and, it could be days yeah. of going home in dark, so uh, it's getting to that point. So, unfortunately, it's all part of like, part of the uh, cycle of, yeah. some, of the of the year here in Wisconsin. It's really not so bad when it's warm, mm-hmm. you know. You can kind of take it. It's just when it gets cold and raw, yeah. man. And it's five in the morning, and it's just dark and cold. I I, I miss I miss June twenty fifth. <laughs> That's true. It's the longest, yeah. I miss those long summer days when it's nine o'clock and it's still not light out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And it changed the darkness. It just changes your body. You get tired earlier and you just, I don't know. You, you, you feel a little bit different for some Absolutely. reason, but well, that, that's forgotten. Tash, what's, uh, what do you never forget? Well, I mean, we mentioned it earlier, Joe, and thank you for that, but I'm never forgetting uh, anniversary and uh, being married 21 years yes. to my lovely wife, Melissa. Um, it's been a great 21 years. We have two great boys. We have a couple dogs that you listen to the end of the podcast. You get to hear howl. Oh yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'm never forgetting. Uh, it's, it's been a great 21 years and I'm extremely happy. So yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. No, congrats. I mean, it's been, it's been fun to watch. I mean, you guys do it right. 21 years. Like we said before, another 21, no doubt. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thank you. And Joe, how about yourself? What do you never forgetting well tosh i'm definitely never forgetting the kitchen dwellers i talked about them last (laughs) week but appropriate to our guest i know we talked about it a little bit in the interview with tom but um it's just it's the memories at the ymca that they're generational you know i grew up going to the y took swimming lessons there my kids took swimming lessons there you know i mean it's just i think so many families and listeners of the noosa cast have gone through the same thing you've used the y throughout generations you know um you talk about 21 years, you know, right? I mean, you, you've 
your kids went through mm-hmm. the Y. You did some stuff yep. with the Y. It's just it's kind of it's kind of cool to see, and, and we're obviously just never forgetting that that is truly a part of part of our life. And it's yeah, it's I, it's it's appreciated, yeah. Tash. It's, it's kind of great cool. for the community. It's an awesome awesome yeah. place. So. Now we appreciate Tom coming on, and it, it was a great episode, and, and it's it's cool to learn more about the why. And Tash, per usual, it's always a hoot to do this with you. I, I love the Noosa cast. Yeah, it was a great time always. Until next week. Until next week. Thank you for listening to another great episode of the Noosa cast. We'd really appreciate it if you hit up our social pages, subscribe, like, follow, and don't be afraid to engage. Head over to our YouTube channel to get exclusive content like the full interviews and speeches from the past Red Smith banquets. Thank you to Digstown for all the music in today's episode. Catch a gig or find them on Spotify.